So, hi everyone, this is Devlina welcoming you all to another exciting episode of Icons Behind Brand. And today I'm very happy and excited to invite our guests, a couple who has been doing an amazing work in the field of influencer marketing, passionate and enthusiastic, Ms. Payal Shakuja and Mr. Deepak Shakuja. They are the co-founders of Ripple Links. A warm welcome to you, Payal and Deepak. So, uh, Payal and Deepak, warm welcome to Icons Behind Brand. Deepak and Payal are couple and entrepreneurs. So, I would love to know about your journeys first, how you met and how Ripple Links has happened. So, I will take it up. I mean, whenever this question comes, Deepak is the first one to jump in. Uh -huh. But, uh, uh, so, we had done our uh, MBA together way okay. back in 2003-2005 and uh, that's where we met and uh, Deepak till now he remembers the date when we met you know what was I wearing and you know till now he remembers all of wow. it so, so he always tells me that I had my eyes on you from day one so Amazing. You know, it was 17th of July that we met and after that it was all destiny we were meant to be together so we are here running the buildings together so yes, as Pal said, we met, uh, you know, in 2000, 2003 and it will be completing 20 years uh, together as, you know, friends, uh, partners, business partners, parents for 10 years. Uh, it's been a long journey and uh, it was just time to happen. So, so 10 years back or maybe plus 10 plus years back is when we started Ripple Links. And, you know, one of the things that that the kick that we got from was probably our, you know, family backgrounds where we had uh, businesses uh, running ups and downs we have seen uh, you know in our in our family businesses as well and <laughs> probably that was the kick uh, that kind of kept us going and one of the things that we always talk about uh, till today was you know we were not very clear of what we would do but we were clear that something we will we will want to do which would be our own baby and that's when we started Ripple Links. Pyle so actually started this. You know, I joined in six months into the business. A typical, you know, middle class mindset at that point in time. Uh, you know, uh, we had just taken a house. You know, we were just just figuring out how the life uh, will be. And that's when I also kind of dropped in my papers, spoke to my uh, mentors, and said that okay, I think I'll not be working uh, anymore, and I'll try my luck uh, with with what we want to do. Initially, uh, you know, we were lucky, and and you know. I believe India is a great place for that, which is that, you know, when you're starting on your own, there are several people who just knock your doors to help you, even without you going, you know, and asking for help. And, and that's where, we, you know, we were very lucky to have those initial set of friends, families. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you know, the last company I left was one of our very, you know, early clients itself. Oh. So that itself was a you know big kick, Devina, because you know that 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 adds a lot of responsibility on on your head rather than pressure. You know, successful mm -hmm. or not, that's the responsibility because people who you know are trusting when you are you know trying to even learn. See, one thing I'm uh, just picking it from this particular conversation: that trust and responsibility. When uh, you have people uh, around you who are trusting on you, you as a you know responsible person taking it as a responsibility. That love is becoming your power to you know uh, fuel your journey towards the long run. So I think this is a great, you know, fuel uh, for anybody to start it off. It's amazing to, uh, you know, hear your journey. I mean, how you have started and somewhere it is, you know, resonating to me. You know, if you ask me personally, I am a, I'm a, I have also started, I have also started with along with my husband. We have co-founded a company together and uh, the journey is quite similar. So I, I'm literally enjoying from where you have started. And let's see, I'm excited to, you know, go ahead for more so as you said that you have started you know working from home before the pandemic so i i am just you know identifying you are always before trends okay so <laughs> one thing which is like very trending now influencer marketing which is a hot topic but you have started this way before it when it was not this popular so again, you are like before the trends uh, which has happened now. So, you know, what was the thought process that time? How it started? Like, I mean, uh, how you thought of, you know, creating a business into this space? So, so basically, 
it boils down to the social early social media days so it actually uh, even before the influence of it i'll probably go two more years before that when ripple links actually started so ripple links didn't start as a social uh, influencer marketing company ripple links started as a social media and content shop okay and that boils down to early facebook and twitter days now uh, while we were at it we would you know always love the word viral which in true sense existed in those days now it's post viral paid viral or whatever you call it but in those days viral you know because the algorithms were very open uh, for social media platforms it it actually allowed things to to go viral and and what you just said right we 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 as businesses uh, you know devlina maybe you and us we probably got our first five clients through references the first 10 clients through references word of mouth and when the social media world started coming in when the linkedin recommendations were picking up or facebook comments were picking up uh, that's when you know both of us would sit and read the comments for the brands that you know we were working with twitter became a banter box long back you know it was a complain complain box and it, it exists till today or the politics side of things uh, but facebook and you know uh, linkedin at that point in time uh, they were uh, the minute points that people would put in as comments or engage with brands and brands would take them so seriously when actually you know those automated systems of orms also did not exist now you know now there's, there's so much uh, tech development that has happened in the orm side at that point in time it was the real humans who were reading those comments answering to those comments you know showing their love to their consumers who were you know who were showering love or you know were being upset mm-hmm. that's when you know we realized that uh, you know somewhere this this democratization of the, the the consumer getting closer to the brand will will work in the future and you know some things we can call it for the vision and some things we can just call it you know as as sheer luck as pilot has been saying both these combined gave us the strength that we pivoted stopped our business running business that we were doing went to the brands you know take took their intent handed over them to some other you know agencies and and partners and we pivoted to the influencer marketing space almost like you know within a month or two first year very difficult you know initial days brand like till today many brands were doing influencer marketing as a check box you know post covid things have changed a lot but theek hai thoda sa budget dal do we will see it was a, a lot to do with the pr side of things where brands wanted you know Uh, bloggers right it is 7 years back or 8 years back we are talking when you know short form content did exist was the the key opinion leaders who were writing you know paras and paras on on yeah. certain topics and we were glued to it right as consumers we would read those blogs now again again the patterns have changed and we you know cannot see a a video more than 15 seconds so that you know that journey uh, of us understanding that you know i i am making purchases by reading the blog or or you know i am buying a automobile after reading the you know the community of close folks who are considered experts uh, mm-hmm. in a particular field uh, that gave us the strength and vision and you know ability to figure out and probably stick to what we are today so yes yeah I would also like to add, you know, like earlier when we, you know, both of us come from small towns, right? And when we moved to Bangalore, you know, we were all by ourselves. So for for small things, we would, you know, take recommendations from people, right? We would tell, कौन से doctor को दिखाना है या बच्चे को school में भेजना है and things like that. So slowly, we also realized that there was already a lot of chatter around these things happening online. You know, like how Deepak said, from which car to buy to to which place to go to for a holiday. You know, reading reviews and things like that. so we knew that early on that this would be the way forward where people will follow certain people and then go by what they are saying so rely on somebody for their decision and take your decision based on the conversation that we read and i think that is what led us also into you know influencer marketing and yes let me tell you first couple of years you know were difficult very difficult it was it was not that rosy because there were no brand budgets uh, you know it was very difficult and and it it is fair because there was not many you know the metrics that the brand would want to really track why should i spend even a couple of lakhs into uh, influencer marketing you know campaign or add that small checkbox to do that and and you know it took a lot of 
or you know concept selling it, it it took a lot of confidence building it you know we we went to the brands and we you know said if it doesn't perform don't pay us i mean there are their brands who really don't you know there, there are no brand who will not pay you for the hard work that you have done but that gave them the confidence that you know yes let's try this out right we really put in our business and 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 their business rather than said let's try this out and in certain brands you know last 5 years so our attention is actually very good we believe in you know servicing the brands in the way uh, that, that the value added is so much that they are with us for long period unlike you know the quick bucks uh, and and we have been very you know thankful to to certain brands who have been with us for five plus years yeah, yeah. and a lot years. of brands yeah so a lot of brands they believe now we have become their extended team you know Uh-huh. So they do support for anything that is related to influencer marketing. Be it you know a campaign that we are doing or something that is happening on social and things like that. They don't you know uh, stay away from picking up the phones and saying, "Hey, I was trying to do this. Can you help me? How can I do it?" Or uh, you know, we recommend that we do this, and you know, we also go proactively to them and say that you know we want to try out this. This is something that is doing this. With this is something we think will you know work for the brand, or this is happening in the industry. Why don't we try it out and all of that? So it's been a two-way relationship where, uh, you know, we go to brands and brands also trust us, and you know they are also open to taking our suggestions and things like that. What advice would you give your younger self? I don't know. Maybe for me, it would be like set free because maybe when I was, you know, twenty years earlier, there were a lot of things I didn't do because I thought maybe right here, no here, maybe mm-hmm. I should have just. For me, it would be. Get started early on. So with that, we are out of this rapid fire round. Before we wind up the conversation, I want you to speak on what would be your message to an aspiring brand leaders. So, so for us, I, I think it, this this resonates with our own brand thought. Where you know what we get asked, you know, some of the the, the brand managers. I mean, we have been lucky enough to work with. some of the best best brand managers in the country uh, you know who have been so successful in their own industries in their own you know uh, companies one thing that that you know i i have myself learned from them which i would probably tell uh, uh, an aspiring brand manager would be again get get very close to your customer first you know you you know your product so well that you fall in love with the flaws as well and and there every product has its own journey right but for me it is it is the understanding of the consumer so important uh, uh, because that the moment you understand that there are so many ways to communicate there are so many ways to engage there are so many you know uh, ways that will help you uh, get you know your your brand getting stuck in the consumer's mind and and that's as a brand manager your your task should be so for me it would be first just try and then that's what i've seen many people just you know don't want to understand do do that dirty work of you know going and talking and understanding and spending time with the consumers so for me it would be and and, and i follow that you know i just want to understand the person i'm talking to Their persona, understanding, etc. So for me, it would be that. I think way back when we were doing our masters, we had read that customer is the king, and I mm-hmm. think it it really remains the same. You know, over the years, right? Customer is the king. So if you know whatever we do, right? It is really important to to rightly know what your customer is looking for. Be it you know, be it any business, be it any industry, be it any brand. Right? Because ultimately, we are making something for the end consumer. So your consumer is the king. You know what what the consumer wants, rather than you know. I know we should know our product well, but we should also know what the consumer is wanting and tailor it according to the consumer. So I think you know, like how Deepak said, we should know the con- consumers very well. That is that's the mantra, and I think that's always there to stay. Yeah, I think that is the foundation which uh, you know, Pail, you and Deepak said that uh, as a brand manager or as a you know business owner also, uh, we are very attached to our product and services. You know what, no matter what what it is, but it is very important to you know uh, uncover the consumer and consumer need their persona. So as you said we have read since childhood cons- customers are the king consumers are the king and it's the same so they has to be the uh, you know center stage uh, and the you know center of everything and that is when the business works so it's a great takeaway you know before we wind up one personal question and i think it might help a lot of people so as a couple uh, starting a business so how do you balance work life family life 
personal life how is the balance between you know we start our day together we we start working out together uh, uh, you know we we end our days together i think somewhere in the middle we get to balance i don't know and, and you know there are a lot of disagreements there's there's a lot of love there's a lot of you know banter in terms of you know disagreement uh, of of any topic personal professional but i think since I think I mean we didn't start dating from day one. We were very dear friends first, which allows us to continue the way we are uh, today. You know, I always genuinely believe in this. Uh, I have the same boss in home and in office, so I bow down very easily. And, and, uh, <laughs> <I'm sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> He's lying. For me, Devlina, like how Deepak said, right? We are almost twenty-four by seven. So I think we don't take each other as a separate person, but you know. over the years i think we have always been together and i think that is what has kept us you know be it personal life be it work be it you know driving together or, you know going on vacations together working out together having a chai together in the morning so for us i don't see me and deepak separately but it has always been you know together kind of a thing so so when it so i think we have to try and figure out that there are days right or there are months where we figure out okay we are not talking anything personal we start with work we be end with work, work yeah those two weeks we probably you know just shut up during our like conversations in the morning and we this actually we did 6 months back that we will not talk work, work at yeah. home in the mornings because evenings you know you you, you take so much back home some of the other days that you have trying yeah. all that the mornings usually you know nothing So that like we try and try and you know understand the gaps or or you know some things which are which are there which should not be there which happens right like too much work is also not not good or or too much you know we don't carry the personal stuff to office as much as possible so those breaks the understanding there's a bit of change we were friends when we started became business partners and business also you know has taught us uh, how to balance this relationship much better uh, than being you know a, a husband wife because there are so many difficult situations that you have to take practically mm. you know keep emotions aside and being you know partners emotions play a for hand in many many situations right you you talk in practically because you also take each other for granted so this this 10 12 years uh, somewhere maturity has allowed us probably you know, to take Thing and and it's not that you know we have not logged or we have not taken the wrong decisions. We as business partners have taken so many wrong decisions. We have couples have taken so many wrong decisions. But but I think that's it's the journey that allows you you know to 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 run the show personal professional healthier happier fashion. It comes now it comes probably probably it's not that we don't fight or we don't disagree on things. We still do. Uh, but I think we have learned the art, uh, some or the other. As I said, I bow down. And we do have a ten-year-old, you know, who gets us fired. grounded. Sees oh, fires, yes. you know, a lot of times. <laughs> Sometimes when I pick up a laptop on a Saturday, he thinks, "Hey, Saturday is no laptop." Oh yeah. Then he goes to buy a book for office Saturday. You know, so we do have all of that. Short answer yeah. became very long. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, no. This was not a part of the short answer. I know you cannot answer this as you know one word uh, at all. So, and you know, I see a very fine uh, balance between you both. You have a great chemistry, and you have a maturity and clarity between you. And I think the same reflects the decision which you run together. you take separate decision you both are very strong individual at the same time you know you are a great team um, as a like i mean as a co-founders as a you know life partners so so this is how you know i have observed and i see a great future uh, in your company and in your personal lives as well i wish you all the very best and it was so inspiring meeting you both payal and deepak individually you both are very inspiring and as a couple as well thank, thank you so you much devlin so and thank you for taking out time for this session today it was really nice yeah it was amazing having you on icons behind brand and uh, you know i would love to have you again and again in the platform uh, just be here i mean whenever i call you and i bother you no problem <laughs> would love to be here yes yes thank you for your time deepak thank you for your time pile have a great thank time you. you had a good time thank you so much